I, I just want to start this video out with a disclaimer. This video is about Resident Evil as a series, but I will be focusing on Resident Evil Village as a means of grounding this video somewhere. The topic I'm covering here encompasses a lot of hypothesis and is mostly built off my own observations, so do not quote me on anything. I'm not sure how much I like this video, but this is a great chance to show you all how schizophrenic I can get, so here we go. Resident Evil Village recently won the 2021 Game of the Year award for Steam, which is what originally led me to make this video. Originally, it was going to be about the game itself and its ups and downs, but over the course of planning that video out, it became more and more about the series itself, and I started noticing more references to Resident Evil's past and began thinking about the series' future. Resident Evil Village has been the first Resident Evil title in a long time to reach this level of critical acclaim. The last one to get anywhere near this level of praise was Resident Evil 4 back in 2005. This has brought both new and old eyes to the series, and I feel like this is a good time, while a little late, to talk about the game and the series as a whole. Resident Evil is a very old series when you consider how far gaming has come in the last 30 years. Its first debut was on the original PlayStation back in 1996. Since then, the series has seen numerous titles added to it, and has seen every generation of the PlayStation leading up to the PS5. At its oldest, the series defined what the survival horror genre was at the time, and at its youngest, the series is trying to pick up the pieces left behind back after Resident Evil 4. The two most recent games have been renowned for their part in picking up the most pieces that the series has been leaving behind, more so than just the return to horror that 7 and other side titles have been claimed for. While 7 returns to the roots that Resident Evil planted in the 90s, it also provided a new path for the series to take. A new virus that hasn't really been seen in the series so far, along with the return of Chris Redfield and the Umbrella Corporation. The game sets up Resident Evil Village to take that story and expand upon it, which Village executes fairly well. Resident Evil Village concludes the aspects of the mold from Resident Evil 7 and its origins, as well as concluding the story of Ethan Winters, ending him as a character but also setting up the future of the series at the same time. It sets up Rose Winters as a possible protagonist bioweapon, and it fully transfers the roles of Neo Umbrella and the BSAA, seeing the B BSAA use advanced bioweapons to do their dirty work. It also sets up Chris Redfield as a possible new investigator of bioweapons as well. This game is both the door at the end of a long hallway, and the door at the beginning of another. It feels like it's mostly attempting to conclude the series that we know, and present the future of the series, or even a new series entirely built on the foundation of Resident Evil. What possible future could that be? Let's find out by taking a look into Resident Evil Village. Resident Evil Village, at, at least to me, feels like more of a sequel to Resident Evil 7 than it does as an addition to the series itself. It is the first Resident Evil to my knowledge that completely finishes what a previous title started, with Resident Evil 5 maybe being the only exception as it follows up on the events of Resident Evil 4, 1, and adds on to the story of where Oswald Spencer and Umbrella started their operations. Resident Evil Village follows, adds onto, and concludes the events of Resident Evil 7, as well as provides some wider story pieces that add on to the series, though those are far fewer with the main piece being a note in Miranda's lab at the very, very end of the game. The story follows the Winters family after the events of Resident Evil 7 and focuses on Ethan as a character, a dad now rather than a husband like he was in 7. Ethan, driven by his devotion to his family, battles the horrors of the village while also uncovering the origins of the original mold. We see Ethan getting hit harder than ever before, going further than just losing a hand or a leg. Through all of this, he triumphs over challenge after challenge just to inevitably be told by Evelyn, the little girl from the previous game, that he's made of smoker's lung. This doesn't phase him, however, and he gets back up to deal one final blow to Miranda, before being the biggest chat ever and blowing up a whole town just so his family can get out safe. Throughout the experience, Resident Evil Village gives us a lot of callbacks to the previous games in the series. Duke often references the merchant from Resident Evil 4. The inventory system itself is just the same one from Resident Evil 4, but without it being a briefcase. And Heisenberg referencing the boulder that Chris punched in Resident Evil 5. The game itself feels like a small trip down memory lane at times. It really seems like Capcom took Resident Evil Village as an opportunity to acknowledge where they came from with the series and give us that acknowledgement in this form of, you know, nice fan service. With this, they also seem to be partially sticking to the return to horror that Seven has been praised for. This doesn't seem to be the focus for Village, though, as the game definitely feels more action-oriented. The game itself is short, but the horror bits felt the shortest to me, with the main meat and potatoes of the gameplay all being centered around action like it has been since Resident Evil 4. 
The initiative that Capcom is taking with Village is great because it shows that they are willing to commit to the story and commit to what they and the fans want for the series in future installments. This isn't all sunshine and daisies though, as it is very obvious with their departure from third person and their increased interest in multiplayer that they are attempting to depart from the standard fare of Resident Evil. The return to more action-oriented gameplay makes it very clear that Capcom has no plans on trying to completely return to its roots as a survival horror game. They seem to be moving in a new direction, focused on survival action rather than survival horror, which is what they had broken into with Resident Evil 5 and is what they seemingly are wanting to transition back to. Looking at Resident Evil Village, this is even more clear, as the game, while still engaging the player in plenty of horror sections, is far more enveloped in action sequences, with horror as a background for the game rather than the main focus, some examples being Chris's lichen section and all of the boss fights. Now that I've gone through all of that, let's get into the entire reason I'm making this video. Everything I'm about to say is pretty much just my brain going on a caffeine bender and spitting out what it thought of, or otherwise just pure theory. Each of the sections of Resident Evil Village are fairly short, with the longest being around 20 to 30 minutes on a replay of the game. The entire game on a replay can be anywhere from 2.5 to 5 hours, with it being anywhere from 5 to 8 at the first time going through. Compared to the average 30 or more hours that modern games take to complete, Village doesn't even come close to scratching that amount of game time. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, because a good game doesn't require a lot of time to be good. Game length doesn't equal game quality, and that is on full display here with Village. Capcom did an excellent job writing Village to be captivating, engaging, and memorable, and condensing all of that writing and development into a small 8 or so hour experience. With how short Village is, it seems like this was an intentional move by Capcom to either develop their multiplayer game, like they did with Resident Evil 3 Remake, or focus on wrapping up what they set up in Resident Evil 7 and build what they need for the next game or even series, no more and no less. There's a good chance that with how old Resident Evil has become and how detached it is from the original story and genre, that Capcom might be using Village as a method of closing out Resident Evil as a series in favor of a new one, this new series being built off of what Resident Evil as a series has been set up to be. Now, they could still continue Resident Evil, but it certainly won't be the Resident Evil that we've come to know and love, despite the recent changes that have happened to it. They definitely want to go back to a more action-oriented gameplay style, Village is an example of that, and in a sense, 3 Remake is as well. Capcom has also made it clear that they want to move into multiplayer content with Resident Evil, as seen with Resident Evil Resistance and the Reverse, both having been shipped with the most recent Resident Evils and both being somewhat controversial. Resident Evil Resistance wasn't asked for, and it was announced separately to Resident Evil 3 Remake, and before 3 Remake was even announced itself. It almost felt like Capcom was selling out to the multiplayer market, but it ended up just all being bad PR, because they ended up just stapling it to 3 Remake and sending it out for free. They also forgot to balance the game, and they ended up killing it less than a year after it launched. Reverse is in a different spot entirely, with it still not being asked for, but not even being available more than a year past its technical release date. To me, this is just Capcom knowing that they messed up bad with Resistance and still want to make a multiplayer Resident Evil, but they also want it to succeed. If Capcom didn't want to do multiplayer with Resident Evil, then they would have given up completely after Resistance failed, but no, they're still trying. Who knows what Reverse will actually end up like when it eventually does release, but for now we can only guess. I personally think that it'll be fairly close to what it was during the beta, but considering the reason it was delayed was because of the bad reception from the beta, who really knows what it might look like. The whole experience is 100% trial and error for Capcom, and I honestly hope it works out for them. They've been putting a lot of effort into these projects, and I'd like to see at least one of them work out. As for the story side of Resident Evil's future, there's a lot to analyze. Village sets up a lot of things that could become key points in future games. The main thing that points to a major shift in the story is the re-involvement of Umbrella and the BSAA into the story. In Resident Evil 7, Umbrella returns as Blue, or Neo Umbrella, and has the BSAA help him investigate the Baker Manor, where Ethan is located. They send BSAA's team, ran by Chris, into the manor to track down the source of the mold and find the remaining members of the Baker family. In Village, Umbrella isn't seen, but Chris's team returns to further investigate the mold and eventually destroy it. At the end of the game, the BSAA themselves show up in what was possibly an attempt to help stop Miranda, though Chris's reaction to their presence says otherwise. At the very end of the game, it is revealed that the BSAA were using human bioweapons to carry out the operation, which shifts the BSAA from a counter bioterror unit to just a bioterror unit with extra steps. It seems like their involvement with Neo Umbrella wasn't healthy, and either Neo Umbrella corrupted them and is now using them like a puppet, or the BSAA ended up like that by themselves, and Neo Umbrella really does want to turn over a new leaf. 
One of the things in Resident Evil 7 that wasn't explained was exactly who Mio was working for when she was stationed with Evelyn, who made Evelyn, and why they were trying to transport her to the United States. My current theory is that it was Umbrella who Mio worked for, and who initially leaked the mold using Evelyn. In a note at the end of Village found in Miranda's lab, it is shown that Oswald E. Spencer, the main founder of Umbrella, was inspired by Miranda to form Umbrella taking the symbols from Miranda's village and using them himself for Umbrella's logo. This note alone tells us that Umbrella are the only group that would have known about the mold and where it was located, with them coming back and taking the mold to use in their own experiments. Through this, they would have then gone on to create Evelyn, a bioweapon of unknown potential and power, far superior to their T-type mutants that they were previously working with, one that they could raise and create multiple of with no need to worry about intelligence levels or things getting out of control. This backfired as Evelyn and the mold were incredibly unstable, Evelyn crashing the boat she was on and infecting the entire Baker home for a few years as a means of having a family, something that she had always wanted. Umbrella were the ones who sent a task force through the BSAA to the Baker household, which explains to us they knew where the boat had crashed, but not where Evelyn had ended up until Ethan's involvement. Through all this, it appears that Umbrella is still up to their old tricks and is coming back to make bioweapons that are more advanced than could ever be known, for a purpose that we can only guess. We can use this to bring up Ethan. Ethan by himself was a bioweapon, a human replication of Ethan entirely made of mold, with self-controlled emotions and memories of his past self, his only real powers being his resistance to what would be fatal damage and the ability to heal quickly with the aid of growth supplements, these supplements taking the form of the medicine bottles we see in both games. Him and Mia having their daughter Rose unintentionally gave Umbrella exactly what they were looking for with their experiments on Evelyn. A fully sentient but sufficiently powered bioweapon, with the only drawbacks being emotional connection and production being limited to the growth of a cycle of a human. Chris is overseeing her, and has in a way become a new version of Oswald Spencer, running tests on bioweapons for what is, as of now, an unknown use. The text at the end of the game's credits exclaims that Ethan's story is done, but Rose's has just begun. Rose seems to be the next focal point in the Resident Evil series, whether that is as a playable character is unknown. I actually think it'd be really cool to have a playable bioweapon in a mainline Resident Evil, tying into the experimentation Capcom has been doing with the multiplayer titles. Getting to play as bioweapons in those games gives Capcom a benchmark on how that would work in the mainline games. This could be the direction they decide to go, and while that would be cool, this is still all a maybe. There's nothing I can see from the game that directly confirms or denies this as a future for Resident Evil. The series might stay the same, go this path, depart from Resident Evil and begin an all new series, or even take a completely different path. One thing is for sure, and that is that Capcom is moving towards multiplayer type games for Resident Evil. Resident Evil is a series that I've been following for a very long time now, and I've loved almost every entry to this game so far. It's sad to be thinking about its eventual end, especially so soon. Village did show me though that Capcom does care a lot about the series, and that they want to deliver good content to us going forward. To me, Village seems like a short barrier between the previous games and the future ones, no more and no less. I'm honestly psyched to see what happens in the future with Resident Evil, and I'll be following it closely. The series has been going on for a long time, so whatever Capcom ends up doing, I hope they put their heart and soul into it. A lot of these old series are getting left behind in favor for versions of those series that fit the new corporate mold. Whatever happens to it is just going to happen, and I'm interested to see where this series is going to go. Village itself surpassed the original expectations I had for it. I wasn't super impressed with 7 at the time, and hearing the extreme departure from zombies and even just the standard mold turned me away from the game impartially. Resident Evil 3 Remake did not make things any better, and because of all of this, Village pleasantly surprised me and was an overall enjoyable experience. I recommend it to fans of the series or even just fans of Resident Evil 7. I'm not as sure about it being a newcomer's Resident Evil, but it's not the worst title in the series to start on. I personally started with the first Revelations game on the 3DS, which, considering the series, was an absolutely terrible place to start. Nonetheless, I still loved that game and as a result, loved the rest of the series because of it. Resident Evil Village left me satisfied with the experience I got, and I'll play it again at some point or another, but it probably will be part of like a marathon or something. I would just like to take a second at the end of this video here to say sorry for being so long. Uh, I've been doing some other important things on the side that have held me up. My original plan was just to review the game and its core components, but I, I started theorizing and then just decided to scrap what I had and went full schizo mode with my theory on the series. I do want to do shorter content, so my next goal will be to make a video that isn't nearly as ambitious or lengthy, so stay tuned for that. In any case, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, and I'll see you next time.